Good day everyone! Today we have a lot of topics to discuss because we will be tackling about preliminary concepts in calculus. Now this means that we will be discussing concepts that are very very essential before we move on to the concepts in calculus. Although uh, these topics were already discussed in high school, but again to understand easily on the concepts in calculus, we have to discuss this first, okay? So here is the outline of the series of videos that we'll be creating. So we will be discussing preliminary concepts of calculus. These concepts uh, include functions and their graphs, polynomial functions, inverse of a function, exponential, uh, exponential and logarithmic functions. So we start with functions and their graphs, although this is divided into two functions and later we will be discussing graphs of functions and under these functions there are subtopics so this is also divided into um, series of videos so functions what are functions so we start with the definitions of functions so a function is a set of ordered pairs in which no two ordered pairs have the same first coordinate and different second coordinates which means that if you are given a set of ordered pairs, then we can say that it is a function if no two ordered pairs have the same first coordinate. So for example, for example, um, and different second coordinates, right? So for example, if you are given an ordered pair, let's say two and four and two and six, so that set of ordered pairs um, cannot be considered as function because we have the same uh, first coordinate, which is 2, but uh, different second co coordinates, which are 4 and 6. So that set is not a function. Okay. So a function f from a set A to a set B is a relation that assigns to each element x in the set A exactly one element y in the set B, meaning a function f from a set A to a set B is a relation, meaning it's a correspondence, okay, that assigns every element, let's say x, because x is a dummy variable, so x could be any real number, or x could be any object, okay, every element in the set A has exactly one element, let's say y in the set B. Okay, it's con uh, it is considered as function if every element in the set A has exactly one element in the set B. And what do we call the set A? We call that one as domain or set of inputs. And set B, we call that as the range or the set of outputs. So to understand more, we have here the illustration. This is a function because by definition, Every element in the set A has exactly one element in the set B or one corresponding value in the set B. For example, this element X has one corresponding value which is f of X only. A has one corresponding value which is f of A. This point has one corresponding value with it, which is this point. So this um, correspondence or relation is what we call a function. Okay, so the notation for functions, um, this is usually denoted by F, although um, sometimes it is also denoted as H or G and many more. Okay, so a function is like a machine. It has an input and it has an output, right? This uh, input value, let's say X, uh, corresponds to the element in the set A and f of x, which is the output, corresponds to the value in the set B in the range. So it's like a machine that has an input and also outputs. It's like a function machine. Okay, now we have here illustration to understand more on the concept of functions. 
So we have here the first illustration, uh, first illustration, second illustration, and we have another one. So let us have a question and answer portion here. So tell me if this illustration A is a function or not. If your answer is a function, then you are wrong. It's not a function. Why? Because by definition of function, every element in the set A must have one element in the set B. But there is an element, let's say this element G, has no corresponding value in the set B. So it's not a function. How about letter B? It is still not a function. Why? Because every element in the set A must have one element in the set B only. But there is this element which has two va corresponding values in the set B, T and Z, right? So it's not a function. How about this one? Is this a function or not a function? If your answer is a function, then you are correct. It's a function. By definition, every element in the set A has exactly one element in the set B. How about letter D? Yes, it is still a function because it, it does not violate the definition of function. Every element in the set A has exactly one element in the set B. Let's say point G has one value, corresponding value, which is U. And B has also one value in the set B, corresponding value, which is U. Okay? <laughs> so, we have here important remarks to remember function from set A to set B. We have to take note that for us to say that it is a function, each element in A must be matched with an element in B. Next, some elements in B may not be matched with any element in A. For example, in letter C and letter D. There are elements in B, okay, that have no corresponding values in A. Two or more elements in A may be matched with the same element in B, right? Do you still remember in example letter D? There are or there is an element in A that has the same or matched with the same element in B. Next is an element in A, which is the domain, cannot be matched with two different elements in B. Okay, so if we can see that there is an element in A that has two corresponding values, two or more corresponding values in the set B, then it's a violation of the definition of uh, a function. Okay, so um, these are very important remarks to remember. Now, there are four ways to represent a function. We can represent a function verbally. Okay, we can also represent a function numerically. We can also represent a function graphically. And we can also represent a function algebraically. Now, how can we represent a function verbally? Now, we can represent a function verbally by just uh, giving the description of the function or the characteristic of something. For example, we have here an illustration. Um, this shape is a shape of a square. Now, the shape of a square or the, the circumference of a square, okay, is dependent on what? The circumference of a square depends on what? Depends on the sides, the length of the sides of the square. So, since it's, um, it's a function, because what? Why? Why it's a function? Because a uh, circumference depends on 
four times one of its sides. Because the formula for the circumference of a square is 4s, right? But if we describe that one verbally like the circumference of a square is 4 times 1 of its sides, then we describe that one, we describe the function verbally. But numerically, we can also describe the function. How? For example, this one. We can describe a function by the use of table of values, okay? By the use of ordered pairs, numerically. For example, for, for example, the, okay, the input values here is the time or the number of years. Then the output value is the population. This is a generic um, idea. So it could be a population of um, people or any population. Now this is an example of a function because for every input, let's say 10, there is only one output, the number of population. Let's say uh, after 10 years, the population is 1,750. At t is equal to zero, the population is only 1,650. So every input, there is only one output. Let's say um, 60 years, for example. Then the population uh, will reach 3,040. So we describe the function numerically using table of values or ordered pairs. Okay? So we have here the generic example because this one, this is an application of uh, describing a function. In the real life situation, because we are talking about here population. But um, in the generic sense, suppose we have an input, let's say x uh, values, y values, then we can create an ordered pair. For example, if our x is negative 2 and uh, the y value is 4, meaning their corresponding value, if we have x which is negative 2 is 4, then we can have an ordered pair, negative 2 and 4. If it is 1 half and the y value is 3, 8, then the ordered pair is 1 half, 3 over 8. Or if it is um, 4, which is our x and y is equal to 8, then we have an ordered pair for an 8. So again, this is a function. So we describe this, we describe the function numerically. Okay? This is again a function because every element in the domain has exactly one element in the range only. It's a negative 2, only 4 is the corresponding value. Okay? Next is, we can also describe the function graphically. Okay, by the use of graph. So this involves model, um, modeling a function in a dimensional overlay. So here, we model a function in the xy plane. Right? So suppose, uh, by just looking at the graph, this set here is what we call the domain set of the x values and um, the set of the y values uh, this is the range okay but we describe this one graphically okay for example a specific function for example y is equal to x squared now if we input let's say our input is x <coughs> x is equal to 1 then the corresponding value, y value is 1 also. How about if x is negative 1? The corresponding value is 1. And then if you connect the points, you can create a graph. Then this is also another way of describing a function graphically. Next is algebraically. Algebraically, now this is the most common, 
for most concise and most powerful representation of function because we are using here an algebraic representations or we are using here symbols and operations okay for example f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 3, which means f is a function of, <coughs> sorry, x. So, since x is just a dummy variable and x could be any real number, for example, if you are going to substitute any real number to this function, then there is only one output on that function. Or this one, a is equal to s squared, which is the area of a square, right? So this is a formula. This represents a function algebraically. Or we have here the volume of a sphere, which is denoted by v is equal to 4 over 3 pi r squared. Okay, so we describe the function by the use of the formula or by the use of uh, notations and symbols and also a combination of operations. Okay, now another way to determine if it's a function or not, if we don't know, um, if we do not know the x coordinates and the y coordinates or we don't know the ordered pairs, we can also use the vertical line test. Now, a graph is the graph of a function, okay? If you are given a graph only, we can say that that graph is a graph of a function if, if and only if, there is no vertical line that crosses the graph more than once. So what does it mean? For example, this letter A here. By vertical line test, we can say that this is not a function. Because the vertical line test uh, states that it is only a graph of a function if there is no vertical line that crosses the graph more than once. But in this case, this line crosses the graph more than once. It crosses the graph here and it also crosses the graph here. So this is not the graph of a function. So if we know the formula for this one, we cannot say uh, we can say that that formula is not a function. How about this? It's not a function. How about letter B? By vertical line test, it is a function because it only crosses the graph only once. How about this one? By vertical line test, it's not a function because it crosses the graph twice. Okay? So, it's not a function. Okay? So, those are um, the topics. One of the topics that we'll be tackling, that we'll be talking under the concept of functions. So for the next video, we will be discussing function notation. Okay, so thank you so much and hope you like this video. Don't forget to share the learning that you got from this video. Thank you and God bless.